Stefan Sater was born on the 20th of December, 1833, the son of Carolina and Johann Gottfried Sater in Bonn. His parents owned the restaurant Zum Helm in Bonn's Rheingasse. After an argument with a student who was unwilling to pay, the inn was destroyed and the family had to make a fresh start in Cologne. In 1849, at the age of 16, Stefan Sater completed an apprenticeship at the Cologne bank house Leopold Seligman. In 1856, Sater moved to the bank house Salle Oppenheim, where he was recommended to the financial metropolis of Paris. He travelled on behalf of his employers to London, Madrid and Constantinople. In 1862, he returned to Paris, became a financial publicist and speculated on the stock exchange for his own account. He published a stock exchange newspaper and advertised in brochures for the purchase of shares of large financial projects such as the Suez Canal and later the Panama Canal. Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you most cordially in my beautiful castle. Why do you think I, as the son of a Bonn innkeeper, had such a splendor built? In my day, the social rank that a successful financier like me had to attain was nobility. In 1881, I was raised to the nobility. From then on, I was Baron von Sachter. Of course, a baron needs a representative dwelling. So I bought these lands right across from my old hometown Bonn on the mountain ridge of the Drachenfels. In 1881, Sater approached the Duke, George II of Saxony Meiningen, through a lawyer who elevated him to the hereditary status of barons. Sater donated to numerous charities. Among other things, he made funds available for the construction of an orphanage near Paris and for a new poorhouse in the town of Meiningen. The Düsseldorf architects Bernhard Thüshaus and Leo von Abema drew up the first plans for Drachenburg Castle. The foundation stone was laid in AD 82. Mm. But I still lacked something in their designs, so I had the building reworked by Wilhelm Hoffmann from Paris. He had worked under the famous cathedral builder Ernst Friedrich Zwirner in Cologne before he went to Paris. After a short construction period of less than three years, the castle was already furnished and of course it was equipped with the most modern technologies of my time. Gas lamps, central hot air heating, stairs and columns made of standardized cast iron parts. I myself spent most of my time in Paris in my apartment on the Boulevard des Italiens. <laughs> you might wonder, such a magnificent castle in the most beautiful location on the Rhine. And the Lord of Sartre stays in Paris all the time in his apartment? Well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, my living in Paris was my center of life. 
The Boulevard des Italiens wasn't just my home. It was also an important place of work and a social meeting place. You must know that the trading on the pocket floor of the Paris Stock Exchange, which lasted only a few hours a day, was only a part of the stocks and bonds trading. Around the Paris Stock Exchange, there was a lively semi-official trading of stocks. And in the evenings, the activities shifted completely to the Boulevard des Italiens, to places that were within walking distance of my apartment at number nine. The Maison Dorée, formerly Café Ardi, was one of the most popular restaurants in Paris. Here, the most important personalities of French society met in private cabinets with their own back entrances. By the way, my landlord was the Duke of Albufera, vice president of the Suez Canal Company. As you can see, I had good contacts in the circles of Paris, but I also traveled a lot on business, like into the great American metropolis of New York. Mm. Here I founded the Eden Museum with other investors, where wax figures were exhibited. Mm. But there were also concerts and shows, and as early as 1896 we showed as one of the first and most important venues in America, film recordings. The films of the French Lumiere brothers, which had been premiered in Paris a year earlier. But I also had difficult times. In 1887, I lost a large part of my fortune to inaccurate speculation, yes. And that was accompanied with infamy, especially by the German press. That's it. In 1890, I was granted French citizenship. My stays in Germany decreased. The plan to sell the castle majored in me, but no buyer could be found. <sighs> Despite all the cries of naysayers that I was financially down, I managed to maintain the castle. On the 30th of March 1902, the bachelor Stefan von Sarter died in Paris. He was buried there at first. His nephew, Jakob Hubert Biesenbach Jr., then transferred his body to Königswinter and erected a tomb for him in the municipal cemetery. Yeah, yeah, an exciting man of the 19th century, this Mr. von Sarter. Welcome to our introductory film about the history of Drachenburg Castle. My name is Magnus Heithoff. Before you get to know the castle building on a tour, I would like to introduce you to the eventful history of Jus and the people who, according to Stefan von Sarter, have influenced the building. After Sarter's death, a brother and his nieces and nephews inherited the castle and the lands in the Siebengebirge. One of the nephews had the castle with its surrounding park bought by a broker at the auction. This nephew was Jakob Hubert Biesenbach Jr. He was the son of Sarter's sister Johanna, who had married into a family of building contractors in Düsseldorf. Jakob Hubert Biesenbach was born in Düsseldorf in 1870. He studied law in Freiburg and Bonn and received his doctorate. Until 1904, he lived with his wife in Bonn. Then the couple moved with their children to the Drachenburg. Biesenbach offered souvenirs to visitors to the castle. Postcard editions and lithographic folders 
showing views of the castle, interiors and mural paintings. Nordic summer houses were built in the park. Log cabins with two to three rooms providing accommodation for summer vacationers. The houses received names from the Song of the Nibelungs and Germanic legends, such as Kriemhilde, Valkyrie or Siegfried. In 1910, the nephew of the builder sold the castle. He moved with his family to Wiesbaden, later to Munich and settled temporarily in Vienna. His political stance was strongly nationalistic. At an early age, he joined the circle of the Nazis around Adolf Hitler in Munich and later became legal advisor for the Nazi party. In his later years, he became active in literature. Among other things, he wrote a biographical novel about his uncle Stefan von Sarter entitled A Rhenish Boy. Jakob Hubert Biesenbach died in 1947. The new owner to whom Biesenbach sold the castle was Egbert von Simon. He was born in 1863 in Frankfurt Oder into an officer's family. Von Simon followed the family tradition and embarked on a military career. He served as an officer in several cavalry regiments. Egbert von Simon bought the castle in 1910. He tried in vain to sell the site profitably to the Prussian state, which was also owner of the Drachenfels mountain plateau. Von Simon then managed the castle himself. In addition to building a large festival theatre and an airship hall, he planned to build a hotel in the style of the Nordic summer houses. He was unable to carry out these major plans for financial reasons. Von Simon realised a limited extension of the visitor programme. He opened a nature theatre, organised a horticultural exhibition in the park and organised art exhibitions in the castle. In the First World War, Egbert von Simon was killed as battalion commander in France. His inheritance was over-indebted. Therefore, an estate administrator for Drachenburg Castle was appointed. From 1918, a new buyer was found. The cologne merchant and manufacturer Hermann Flohr who first rented the castle and bought it in 1923. Hermann Flohr was born in 1871 in Mülheim, Ruhr. After working as managing director for companies in Cologne and becoming independent in the field of mortgage lending, he opened a military equipment factory in the First World War, where he produced ammunition bags, belts and tents. From 1922 onwards, Hermann Flohr provided the Patriotic Women's Association of Königswinter with a number of log houses in the park of Drachenburg Castle for a women's rehabilitation home. Above all, single and economically weak women from all over the Rhineland were able to spend relaxing weeks in the castle grounds. Flohr used the castle itself mainly as a weekend and holiday home and occasionally reopened it for visitors. In 1929, he bought a vineyard near Naumburg an der Saale as a new holiday home. He decided to sell Drachenburg Castle. Hermann Flohr placed in 1930 an advertisement in a Catholic magazine in which he was looking for a Christian order with educational activity to sell the castle to them. The order of Christian school brothers responded to the advertisement. This lay order was founded in France in the late 17th century and has been worldwide active since the 19th century. In 1931, the St. Michael boarding school for boys was founded at Drachenburg Castle. The castle has been adapted to the new use. Classrooms were built in the living rooms and the art gallery was converted to a school chapel. The boarding school students lived in the log houses. 
The political pressure on this Christian school under the National Socialists, who had been ruling Germany since 1933, grew stronger. Finally, the school had to close in 1938. The building could not be held by the order without the school fees and was therefore sold to the German Labour Front, the National Socialist Unitary Federation of Workers and Employees. The latter made Drachenburg Castle available to the Adolf Hitler School of the Cologne Aachen district. In addition to the existing national political educational institutions, the Adolf Hitler schools, founded in 1937, served as party-owned cadre schools for the training of the future leadership elite. Extensive reconstruction work took place before the students moved to the site. The two-stairway staircase, with portico at the entrance of the castle, was demolished and a large monumental staircase was built, which was to be used for marches and flag calls. Classes began at the beginning of 1943 in the castle. In 1945, Drachenburg Castle was heavily shelled by the Allied forces. The older students defended the site with flak positions. Especially the western facade of the castle on the Rhine side was badly damaged. After the war, the railway directorate Wuppertal became interested in Drachenburg Castle as a training building. It was able to rent the site from the state of North Rhine-Westphalia and renovated the damaged castle buildings. The school was opened in 1948. In courses lasting several weeks, prospective railway assistants were trained with theory lessons. Technical knowledge was imparted to the railway workers at a training station in the Kunsthalle. In 1959, however, the railway training center moved out again. For Drachenburg Castle, a period of several years of emptiness began. At the beginning of the 1960s, the responsible state authorities did not attribute great value to the castle building as a monument. Demolition plans became concrete. A new state finance school was to be built on the site of the castle. When these plans became public, they met with widespread opposition in the region. In May 1963, a community of interest for the preservation of Drachenburg Castle was founded, in which municipalities and associations of the region were involved. Thanks to press work and political advocates, the merger succeeded in saving Drachenburg Castle from demolition. However, the castle fell into disrepair. Intruders tore up wooden panelling and floors for fuel. Mural paintings were completely robbed or parts of the pictures cut out. The grounds were overgrown. At the beginning of the 1970s, a private interested party came forward, Paul Spinat. He was born in 1904 as the son of a postman in Bad Godesberg. He had learned the profession of bank clerk at the Sparkasse in Godesberg and later worked there as deputy director. After returning from a war service in World War II, in 1949 he registered a trade for the manufacture of clothing, Spitan clothing. His daughter from a first marriage, divorced in 1950, was the creative part. Paul Spinat took care of purchasing and sales. In 1971, Paul Spinat bought Drachenburg Castle. He dedicated himself to the renovation and furnishing of the derelict complex. On the outside, he reconstructed various components and decorated the park with all sorts of ornaments. Inside the castle, Spinat had the defects on the canvases reconstructed and damaged wooden claddings were supplemented with synthetic resin elements in a wooden look. Spinat furnished the rooms according to his own taste, with furniture and art objects of various styles. Installations such as the gallery with dummy organ in the music hall 
or the non-functional staircase in the art gallery gave the building a different spatial impression. In 1973, Spinat reopened the castle for visitors. He organised numerous concerts and receptions with celebrities in the castle. In 1985, three years after the death of his second beloved wife Carla, Spinat remarried. His third wife was the dazzling society lady Erina of Saxony. From that time on, Spinat liked to appear as Count of Saxony. Paul Spinat died in February 1989 and was buried in the Königswinter Cemetery next to Stefan von Sarter. Spinat had tried to sell the castle to a contractor. Shortly before the deadline expired, the state of North Rhine-Westphalia decided to make use of his option right and to purchase Drachenburg Castle. After the sale to the state of North Rhine-Westphalia, it was handed over to the North Rhine-Westphalian Foundation to initiate a comprehensive renovation of the complex. The castle was already listed as a monument in 1986. After extensive planning preparations, the restoration began in the mid-1990s. The castle building was completed in early 2010 and in 2011 the park. In the process of restoration, it was decided to transpose the building back to the time of Stefan von Sarta, with the reconstruction of historical components on the exterior and the furnishings of the late 19th century in the interior. Ladies and gentlemen, after this introduction of the eventful history, I would like to invite you to get to know the building and the park of Drachenburg Castle. I wish you a pleasant stay and many unique impressions. <laughs> <laughs>